In this video, we will walk through the steps for configuring the business components that consume HL7 messages. We'll focus on two components, business services and business operations, as they handle the input and output data respectively. Suppose we want an integration solution to be able to pick up HL7 messages from the hospital's registration department application, consume them, and then send them to the labs. First, we need to create a new HL7 production named Demo HL7 Production. Remember to select HL7 Messaging as the production type. In our production, we have a pre-built business service named HL7 File Service and its corresponding business operation named HL7 File Operation. Because the business service and business operation components are pre-built, their names are very general. If we want to create new business components, we should give them more specific names that explain what they do. When naming these components, you can consider where the data comes from or keywords that identify a general class of message structures. To make the business service and business operation components work, we'll need to configure them. Let's start with HL7 file service, which handles input messages. All the configuration fields are located under the settings tab. We will start with the information settings section. You can hover over or click field titles to learn more about what each of these fields do. The category field is used when we need to group components together without affecting their behaviors. As we likely have hundreds of components in the production, filtering them by group will make it easier to view specific components. Let's enter file as the category. Next, we will look at the basic settings. The first basic setting we need to specify is the file path, which is the location of the input files. This is where the business service will look for incoming data. In this case, we will enter chl7in as the input directory. Note that this directory must exist in your computer. Now that we've specified the file path, let's look at some additional settings. The file spec field filters by the file name. If we enter data asterisk, the production will look only for files that start with the word data. Another field, the message schema category, determines how the system handles the incoming messages. For example, we could direct the production to treat all incoming messages as schema 2.3.1. Another particularly helpful setting is archive path. With this setting, we can preserve or archive input files that are consumed. Now let's move to the additional settings section. The most important field in this section is pool size, which specifies the number of concurrent jobs and has a default value of 1. A default value bigger than 1 allows multiple jobs to run together but the downside of this is that we will disrupt the order of incoming messages, as some messages might be processed faster than others. Therefore, we keep the default value as 1, because HL7 messages usually need to be processed in the order they are received. Select Enabled, then click Apply to save those changes. Now let's move to the HL7 file operation. Similar to the HL7 file service, we will select File for the category. Next, we have to match the file path to the location of the output files, which in this case is chl 7 out We will leave the default file name, as it will append the date and time as well as the unique identifier to the names of the output files. Again, select Enabled and click Apply to save these changes. Because the HL7 file service and the HL7 file operation are both in the same file category, we could filter the list of components by displaying only these two components. This is very helpful when we have multiple components inside the production and want to view only components from a specific category. Now start the production. The green status indicators next to HL7 file service and HL7 file operation mean that those two components have started without errors as they are currently configured. Note that we also have a pre-built business process named message router that connects the HL7 file service and HL7 file operation. Now our production is ready to pick up and consume messages. The HL7 file service will pick up the messages from the input directory and pass them through the message router to HL7 file operation. The HL7 file operation then places the output files into the output folder. Let's test our production. We will copy the HL7 data file, data.txt, into the chl7in directory. As you can see, this file has now been transmitted to chl 7 out directory with the date, time, and unique ID identifier appended to the file name. In this video, you have learned how to configure business components in a production to transmit HL7 messages. We have seen how these components can manage input and output from files, 
but productions can also receive and transmit messages from many other input and output types, such as HTTP, TCP, FTP, and SOAP by using InterSystem's IRIS adapters. Visit documentation to learn about using each of these message types.